What's going on everyone? It's Ben from Audio from Zero back with another retro Yu-Gi-Oh video back with another Chaos Return format video. If you don't know Chaos Return format, it is the format held in August 2006 at the SJC Indianapolis of that year. Basically one year after GOAT format using the April 2006 ban list. So I've gone through a variety of different decks in this format and I think this is really the last one that I want to cover here. If there are any other decks that I haven't featured in this format, then let me know down in the comments below. But this should be one of my last videos. I might do sort of like an FDK video for this format, just like I've done in formats previously. But I don't really think FDK has really gained too much besides Graceful Charity coming off the ban list. So I don't know if I'm going to cover that this format or not, or just move directly into the next one. But let me know down in the comments below what you'd like to see. But anyway, this is a hero deck, an elemental hero deck. And we're leaning more into the fusion aspect of this because you could just go with a typical sort of wild heart control list, like the one that I showed off in Reaper format. But I feel like, you know, it's good to show off what this deck can do on the fusion side of things, especially since it did get a variety of new elemental hero fusions. If you want to see a more in-depth breakdown of the card by card for this, definitely check out the last video that I made, which was sort of going through my process of building this deck. And I, I think it's pretty good for explaining like why I did what I did here, why I went with the ratios I did. But, you know, the deck is far from perfect in its initial form here. I do think it is in the initial form. But part of, you know, knowing what to change in the future is going to test games. So let's see how this deck actually does in some games and see what might need to be changed. Okay, we got our first game here against Soul65, a frequent guest on the channel. We're going to dive right into that. And we do indeed lose the Rock, Paper, Scissors, which is a bit unfortunate. But this deck doesn't really care too much about going first versus going second. So I think this is ultimately fine. Our opponent's going to think a bit about this, and they're just going to set two, pass back to us. We draw into a King of the Swamp here, which is pretty decent. We could just go for a Fusion Summon right now. And I think that is ultimately what I'll do. But first, I'm going to go for this Rota here, grab a DD Warrior Lady, try and bait out maybe like a TT or something. Summon this out. I figure if it's like a Treeborn Frog or a Sangan, they will flip TT on this and blow up the board. And then we have the way open for a Wild Heart Fusion here. But uh, they didn't go for TT, so I feel like they probably don't have TT. So I'm just going to go for the Fusion Summon here. They could have just been holding it, figuring that the DD Warrior Lady is just one for one removal. So they don't really need to go for the TT here. But either way, I'm just going to go for the Fusion Summon. You kind of want to Fusion Summon a bit early in this deck, like in the early to mid game, because you want to have your Fusion Materials engraved for when you go for like Miracle Fusions and things like that. So I think this is perfectly fine, even though it does go pretty low in resources. We're basically turning our Miracle Fusions into a one card big monster later on if we draw them. So we're going to go for Wild Edge here. We could have gone for Wild Wind, which is the Fusion Monster that you pitch a card from hand and then you pop a Spell or Trap card your opponent controls. But I'd rather just save Call the Haunted and Snap Steel here because I think both of them are very, very powerful. And if it is like Mirror Force, that's like the big punish here. If it's Mirror Force, then we can set Call, bring back Wild Heart next turn. If they've got a monster bigger than Wild Heart, we can just sort of sit on the Call, take the damage, and then Snap Steel one of their things to beat over the other thing, and then get in with Wild Heart that way. So uh, I feel like this is ultimately fine. We're going to attack in to that set monster, and it is a bird face. This seems like this is probably on Harpies. Icarus Attack did get released in enemy of justice and also harpy's pet baby dragon was released as well so there is some stuff you can do with harpies i'm probably not going to cover it on the channel because i think even with you know the new stuff it got it just doesn't really do anything at this point in the game it is just not quite there as a strategy yet so i probably will be returning to harpies uh, in force of the breaker when harpy queen gets released i feel like that does add a bit to the deck but as it is now i think this just isn't enough there to make something out of it. But our opponent's going to road up for a DD Warrior Lady and then set a card, which could be anything, but it's very likely the DD Warrior Lady. We're going to try and get aggressive here. We're going to attack into what is probably the DD Warrior Lady, and it is indeed that, so the Wild Edge will get banished, unfortunately. Now we can attack in for 16. Go for Call here to bring back the Wild Heart, because I figure from this position, we should be in a really good spot. We've got Snatch Steel to take whatever they bring out, and we can just probably get in for a lethal shot next turn. So they're going to summon out a Cyber Harpy Lady, which, you know, again, we're planning on just taking that and then attacking in for lethal next turn. So there are some potential ways that this could backfire on us. If we activate Snatch and they go for, like, Icarus Attack, they can pop our board that way. Uh, but I think it is ultimately fine just to go for this. We're going to Snatch the Cyber Harpy Lady, and then we're just going to attack in. We could have also summoned out the Clayman, just in case they've got, like, Sakuratsu Armor or something. But I feel like if they had Sakuratsu Armor, they would have used it on the Wild Edge, so I feel like this is fine. And turns out, yeah, they just had a set Hysteric Party face down, which is not going to do it here. So that'll be the end of that game. And we're going to go into game two. I did 
you know, make a note of what I cited here. And we cited out the magic cylinder for a dust tornado. And the reason for this is I feel like magic cylinder is a bit awkward in the face of Icarus attack, which I do assume that they're playing given that Icarus attack came out. And it's one of the main reasons to play this deck. Uh, if you activate magic cylinder, when they attack in, they just Icarus attack, tribute their monster, and then pop two cards. And you don't actually deal the damage at all. So I figured it was not really that good. So I'd rather just bring in a dust tornado to deal with some of their back row uh, instead. They're going to start by just setting one passing back to us. And I feel very good about this. We could go for charity here, but I'm going to actually save the charity. And this may seem weird, but what I want to save the charity for is just a position where we potentially need a given fusion monster. And we want to draw into the materials or the polymerization or something like that to get into that. So I'd rather save this for when I know what I actually need here. But as is, I feel like this board is good enough to withstand a lot of things that they might have. We said a Dust Tornado and a TT there. Pass back to them, figuring I can use the TT. Wildheart will survive the TT, but uh, whatever they have will not. They special summon out Sidra here. This is a bit awkward because we TT now, then they'll be able to summon out something else and then get in for damage. So I'm actually going to leave this as is. And I'm just going to wait, see if they summon something else out. If they don't, we lose our Wild Heart. We get Graceful to draw into something potentially else. We also got this Mirror Force that we can set if we really want to. But I feel like they're probably going to commit other things. They go for a Harpy's Hunting Ground here, which is a bit awkward for us. But the good thing is, is that by summoning out a monster, either of these back row chainable. So it should work out fine. They go for the TT there. So we're just going to chain the TT, blow up the board. And uh, Wildheart, of course, sticks around. So they're going to set one pass back to us. We draw into a Sparkman here, which is pretty good. We're just going to bring out that Sparkman. Try and get aggressive here. Again, we don't really need the Graceful at this point. They go for Mirror Force, which will deal with the Sparkman, but will not deal with the Wildheart. Be able to attack in for um, 1,500. And then we're going to set one pass back to them. And the reason why we didn't Dust Tornado in, like, main one there, I guess, is if they've got, like, a Dust Tornado of their own set and they just blind dust our back row here in the end phase, we don't really want to lose this as a bluff. Like, we want this as a bluff. If they summon out a Winged Beast, you know, we can chain it to the summon, or I guess chain it to the activation of Harpy's Hunting Ground to pop the Hunting Ground or the set or whatever they have. So I'd rather just keep this here for now. But on their turn in standby, I'm just going to go for Dust Tornado on the Harpy's Hunting Ground because I feel like we want to keep our Mirror Force online here. So they're going to bring out a Sasuke Samurai here, which is a bit of an interesting play, but they go for Creature Swap, so that makes some sense. So they're able to attack in to the Sasuke Samurai, poke in for a thousand. We can't really uh, Mirror Force that, so that's a bit awkward for us. So I think now I will go for the King of Swamp to thin out the deck a little bit, get into a poly, and then go for Graceful here, trying to draw an out to this card. So this is a bit interesting. We have a couple options here. We could pitch the MST and the DD Assailant, and then keep the poly, Clayman, and King of the Swamp here, go into a Thunder Giant, and try and hit over the Wild Heart that way. But that's going all in. That uses all of our resources except for the Mirror Force to do that. So I don't really think that's worth doing. So what I'm actually going to do instead is pitch the MST and the Clayman. We've got King of the Swamp in hand in case we draw another Elemental Hero. We can go for Poly on that. Uh, or we could use it in the future to thin out our deck a little bit more of that last Poly as well. Um, although that might be a bit awkward because we've well, gone through two King of the Swamps. So that means that that last Poly is less likely to be able to use for a Fusion Summon. So yeah, I think that it's fine just holding this um, and just having a bit of a flexible option in case we draw something good next turn. But we're just going to summon out this Assailant, attack in to the Wild Heart there, and pass back to them. And they're going to go for a Hysteric Party here, pitching a Harpy Lady, and they're going to bring back a Harpy Lady 1 and a Cyber Harpy Lady. Now, the awkward thing about Harpies in this format as well is that, like, pretty much all the other Harpy monsters, like, have the condition that they're always treated as Harpy Lady, which means that you can only have three total in your deck. So this means that one of those is Cyber Harpy Lady, one of them is Harpy Lady 1. We don't know the other one. I assume it's probably another Harpy Lady 1, as Harpy Lady 1 is pretty good for this deck in general because it buffs everything up. But uh, they are able to get out those two monsters here. We do have the Mirror Force. So this is not scary for us, but they choose to go in for a Sylphid as well. So they're playing into Mirror Force here, but it, I guess it does kind of make sense because they're like, well, you know, if they got Mirror Force, they got Mirror Force. And uh, if they don't, I'm in a really good position. But if they do, I'm kind of, you know, in a bad spot either way. So I think this does make sense for an aggressive push. I'm not sure if I would have done it, but I, like I can't fault them for going for this. It does just, you know, backfire on them immensely because we do indeed have that Mirror Force. I think they could have read that we had the Mirror Force because we dust tornadoed the Harpy's Hunting Ground. So we clearly had a non-chainable good trap in the back row there. 
Um, but, you know, again, it's, it's one of those sort of situations where, like, sometimes you just have to go for it. Now, unfortunately, even though we have Polly here, we don't actually have a way to get in for lethal damage. Uh, we can't, like, you know, fusion summon into Thunder Giant or Rampart Blaster or etc. and actually deal 4,800 damage total. So, uh, or, no, yeah, it would be 4,100 damage. So, we go for the biggest damage option here. We could have also gone for Rampart Blaster just in case they, like, set a card here. Uh, then next turn we can switch Rampart Blaster to Defense and attack indirectly for 1,000. But that still doesn't quite do it because 2,000 plus 17 is 3,700 and then plus an additional 1,000 is only 4,700. So even that won't actually win us the game here. So I think it's just better just to go for Thunder Giant, get in for the more aggressive play, and then next turn we can try and attack in for game. They just have a rising air current here and that's not going to do it. So that's just going to be the end of the game. So interesting to see a Harpy build going on here or like a wind deck sort of thing as well. I assume they were probably on Miyabis too, and maybe Icarus attacks as well. Um, but I don't really think this deck is quite at this point. But still, you know, it does show how powerful Elemental Heroes is compared to some of the other rogue strategies at this time. Because I do think that Elemental Heroes is a bit better than a lot of the rogue strategies going around. You know, it's got some early game boss monsters, and then those convert into late game boss monsters off of Miracle Fusion. So I do think it is a pretty cool deck in all. However... This is against a rogue deck, so let's dive in to what it looks like against a meta deck. Okay, we got a game against PJ Darkness, a frequent guest on the channel. We're diving in to the Rock, Paper, Scissors, and we do manage to win this Rock, Paper, Scissors here. And we are going to be going first here. So, that's pretty good for us, and this is a pretty decent hand. Uh, again, we do have Graceful Charity here, but I don't necessarily want to go for Graceful Charity right now, because I want to see what I draw into, or what I might need to draw into and keep. Uh, in the case of fusion cards here. So we set a DD Warly, set a Heavy Storm, pass back to our opponent. I'm trying to get them to maybe set some more cards here into that Heavy. Either way, we've got MST in case they use Spell and Trap removal on our uh, Heavy Storm. We still have some Spell and Trap removal there. They're going to bring out a Mystic Tomato attack in to our Warrior Lady, and we're actually going to choose not to banish here. I don't really think I need to yet, because we can just attack into the uh, Tomato next turn, or we can do other things with it. So... I could have potentially banished just to open the way up for an aggressive push here, but we don't have any other monsters in hand to really do that with. So I'm fine just going for this. And we draw into an Exiled Force as well. We're going to go for the Heavy here because we want this play to go through. And they chain the Scapegoat. So that's going to be able to get out four more tokens there. And yeah, that's a bit awkward for us. We could have just attacked into the Tomato with the Warrior Lady and then just let that go through. Um, but instead, given that we have this Exiled Force in hand, I might as well just use the Exiled Force to pop the Tomato that way, and also clear an additional token. Although I could have also just used the Exiled Force to pop an additional token, uh, so I guess I should have just attacked in to the Tomato with the Warrior Lady, dealt that, uh, 100 there, and then, you know, summoned out the Exiled Force later, or maybe save the Exiled Force in general, and just let them with some tokens. Because if I go into a Wild Edge later, then I can clear those tokens anyway. So, you know, th there were a couple different things I could have done here. And maybe I wasted that Exiled Force there, because now they get a set monster. So, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have done that. But I go for a King of the Swamp here, because now I think it's time to go for the Graceful Charity. So we draw three, and then pitch two. We do have the material for a Thunder Giant here, which is not bad. So we could go for that. But instead, we're just going to pitch this Clayman and the Upstart Goblin, because now we can go for a Miracle Fusion here. Uh, maybe I should have pitched one of the Miracle Fusions, so I could have gone for the Thunder Giant in hand, and then Miracle Fusioned away some of the Graveyard. But I figure, you know, it's Miracle Fusion is a better card than Polly in general, so um, I think this is fine. I just go for Rampart Blaster and attack indirectly for a thousand there, and then I'll attack into the set in case like Sangan or something like that. But instead, it's Merchant, so this is going to be able to get them some more monsters in Graveyard there. And I choose not to banish this because I figure they're probably playing other lights they can get in Grave, so I don't really need to banish that. But unfortunately, they do not hit any other lights, so that means that Merchant is their only light in Grave. Which does turn on their Chaos stuff, so if I had banished, they wouldn't have Chaos access here. But again, you know, I figured that they were probably playing enough lights to um, make it so that, you know, they, they had a way into that no matter what. But they're going to go for Last Will here, pop the Warrior Lady with that Zaborg, and then go for a Cyber Sign play here. Now, they haven't been able to test this back or really in cases like Mirror Force or Saku or something like that, um, because they haven't been attacking at all. But they're just going to choose to go for the Cyber Sign play here. I guess they figure they've got two GOAT tokens up. So even if it is Mirror Force or Saku or something like that, you know, they've got ways to recover here. Um, and yeah, unfortunately, that will be the end of the game. So even if we had played that a little bit differently with the Exiled Force and stuff like that, I'm not really sure it would have made a difference because they still would have had a Light and Dark and Grave. Uh, unless we had banished the Tomato with the Warrior Lady, which I don't think was a smart play. Uh, so yeah, I don't think we were going to be able to win that one. 
even with slightly better play. So anyways, uh, they're going to uh, be going uh, second here because we managed to lose that first game. So we do get to go uh, first in this game. And we actually sided uh, out the Heavy Storm, the Premature Burial, the Call of the Haunted, and two Upstart Goblins. The Upstart Goblins because I felt like against a deck that we know is on Stein, giving them more life points is not really the best. The pre and the Call, because, you know, one, it doesn't really synergize with our fusion monsters, and two, if they've got Chaos stuff, then they could be banishing our monsters, and then it doesn't really matter for the pre and the Call. And I cited out the Heavy because I feel like they were not on much back row there, and the back row that we did see was chainable in the form of Scapegoat, so it wasn't really worth doing. And I cited in to um, two Nox, and then three Sakuretsu Armor, so... Uh, that was my signing plan. Not sure if it's the best signing plan in the world, but it was what I did. And I think it's ultimately fine. They just bring out a Sangan here, attack in. We don't want to TT that because that just seems like really bad value for us. So we'll take that thousand pass back to, or they pass back to us. We draw the knock, which is not the best here. Um, so we're just going to pass again. We could set the swamp and then just block off that Sangan attack. But I think swamp is more valuable as a fusion card in hand. So I'd rather just do this. They set two pass back to us. We draw into a Saku, which is not bad. We're going to set this MST in the Saku. They blind MST in the end phase, hit a Saku. And that's a bit unfortunate for us. We kind of wanted that to stick around. They tag in for a thousand and we will take that. They pass back to us and we draw into Clayman, which is pretty decent. We could go for a fusion summon here. And I think we will do that. We're going to go for this Rampart Blaster because Rampart Blaster can get in directly without popping the Sangan. So I figure that's pretty good. If they go for Zaborg, we do have a TT. So it's not the worst thing in the world there. And this prevents them from getting a search. We also set the Mirror Force here as backup. And we could have also gone for Miracle Fusion here for another Rampart Blaster. Just get the clock really going here. 2,000 a turn. But I figured with the TT set, if we do ever need to go for that, I don't want to have double Rampart Blaster on field. So I think this should be fine. They go for a Brain Con here on the Rampart Blaster and summon out a side rest. We are just going to TT that away. Yeah, they can get out like uh, a Stein or something if they got Last Will. But we do have Mirror Force for that, so I feel fine with that. They set one pass back to us, and we're just going to go for a Sangan here. And that's going to be fine by them. I think, honestly, I should have gone for the Miracle Fusion on Rampart Blaster first, because if they had TT here, then, you know, it would have been better to bait that out and then get the 1,000 in with Sangan. But uh, we only have one, like, official copy of Rampart Blaster in our extra deck. But since we have an unlimited fusion deck, we can sort of, like, proxy in another copy. So we're just going to proxy that in here with a Reaper on the Nightmare. So this is standing in for Rampart Blaster here. Uh, I, I quickly, like, just, um, you know, swap this out for the Rampart Blaster and Grave because ultimately that doesn't really matter in terms of the proxying thing um, because it's still proxying for a Rampart Blaster, just proxying for the one in Grave now. So they're going to set a card, activate swords, pass back to us. I feel pretty good about this. We can knock away that set. We hit a Magician of Faith, so I'm very happy to see that gone. Now we can MST their swords and get in for 2,000 here. Now I could also switch the Rampart Blaster to attack, but I don't really want to play into Mirror Force if they've got it, and I feel like this is pretty good. They're at 2,200, so they're very, very low on life, and we should be pretty good here overall. We draw into an Assailant here, which is nice. We're just going to attack in for 1,000 with the Rampart Blaster. We did know about the book, so uh, they will set that down, and we're just going to set this, the, the Assailant here, pass back to them. We could have also attacked in this set, but I didn't really want to do that with Sangin in case it was like DD Warrior Lady or something like that. And I also wanted to be on the defensive in case they did with the Mirror Force. So uh, they're going to go for a Merchant there, get a Brain Control, which is a bit awkward for us. And then they're going to go for a Suk here, flipping back down that Merchant. They're going to attack in to the Sangan here. We'll let that go through. Uh, no real need to Mirror Force that. Uh, we'll add a King of the Swamp here because I figured that this is ultimately pretty decent. We can pitch it to get another Fusion Material Engrave and thin our deck a bit. But also it pairs with the Poly. Uh, that we have set on field because if we draw into another hero then we can just immediately go for a fusion summon there so they're going to pass back to us we draw into exiled force which is pretty good here honestly we use the exiled force to pop that merchant flip up the dd warrior or dd assailant here not warrior and we do get met with a mirror force so i'm happy that i did that i could potentially flip up the rampart blaster here but i know they've got brain con so i don't want to play into that so i'm just going to pass back to them see what they do they are going to set one set another set another pass back to us and we draw into a Confi here. So we're going to go for the Confi, just get a peek at what they're working with. And we see that they've got a Tomato, a Cyber Dragon, and a Souk. So I was a bit worried that that set might be Tomato, but the Tomato in hand means that I don't think they've got it there. Um, which means that I'm much more okay flipping up this Rampart Blaster and attacking the set. It could be Apprentice Magician, which we have seen that they're on. 
but I'm not too concerned about that. If they go for a Prince Magician, then they get out like Old Vindictive maybe at worst case and then flip it up, pop our monster. But not every one of these Prince Magician decks actually plays Old Vindictive. So there's also a chance that they just don't have that there and there's just a Chump Blocker. Could also be an Old Vindictive set. And if it is Old Vindictive set, I don't want them to be able to just keep flipping it down with Sook. So I'll just go for... Um, the the cyber dragon there because if i'm going to flip up the rampart blaster i don't want them to have a monster that can just get over the rampart blaster you know what i mean so i'm going to attack into the set it is indeed the old vindictive so that will pop the rampart blaster unfortunately but i still think we're in a pretty good spot they're going to dust tornado away our poly which is kind of rough and then they summon up breaker so yeah they are able to clear both of our acro we don't get any value off the mirror force unfortunately and they're able to attack in for 16 and now we're in a really bad spot the emergency call is something i guess but doesn't really do anything here we're gonna think about exactly what to get and I think we're just going to get Clayman, try and wall up a little bit here. But, you know, realistically, this is not going well for us. So, yeah, that's kind of rough that they were able to eat the board like that. But, you know, it is what it is. We're playing a bit of an underpowered deck. And uh, a lot of draws in their deck is, you know, a lot better than the draws in our deck. So, uh, yeah, they're able to bring out Chaos Orc here, hit over the Clayman, and then attack in for lethal damage. So that's going to do it for this game here. And I think this game does illustrate why this deck does suffer against more meta decks. Yes, against rogue decks, it is powerful because, you know, you have the early game boss monsters, then you have the late game boss monsters, and you have the flexibility to go into a variety of different fusion monsters that can do different things. But if you compare it to a deck like Chaos or Monarchs or Chaos Monarchs, like, that deck honestly does very similar things, right? Brings out Monarchs early on, you know, those are 2400 beaters, those are basically boss monsters, and then once you get your setup going with things like Treeborn Frog or Chaos Setup and Grave, you have other boss monsters later that you can bring out, right? And in general, Monarchs and Chaos Sork and things like that, they do a lot more than the Elemental Hero Fusion Monsters. The Elemental Hero Fusion Monsters are neat, but oftentimes they are just not really that good uh, in a given game state, and so you're kind of forced into bringing out just a monster that has good attack stats, basically. And while they can occasionally do something like, you know, Zaborg, or not Zaborg, but uh, Thundermark. No, not Thundermark. See, I, I'm I'm just mixing up Thunder Giant with Zaborg the Thundermark because Zaborg is just the better version of Thunder Giant, right? So Thunder Giant can do stuff, but like Zaborg is just infinitely better, right? So even the best of the fusion monsters in terms of like what it actually does as an effect is not really that good. So I unfortunately don't quite think that heroes are here yet in this format. You know, as time goes on, I'll keep showing off this deck and what it gains in the form of new cards from new sets and stuff. But right now, unfortunately, I think the deck is still firmly in rogue tier. But let me know what you think about this deck down in the comments below. Do you think I'm sort of being too harsh on it? Or do you think that I'm actually overrating it and that it's actually a lot worse than I'm making it out to be? Also, let me know how you would build this deck in this format. Do you think that leading into the fusion stuff is good? Or would you rather just lean into the wild heart control style of things? Also, if you like what I do here on the channel, you want to see more gameplay in Chaos Return or any other format like Chaos Return uh, that I've covered on the channel, definitely subscribe. Uh, we're trying to reach 1600 by the end of the month. And, you know, we only are about 90 away. So, you know, uh, relatively reasonable goal to make. So if you're not subscribed, definitely subscribe to the channel. And that will also keep you posted on new videos that I release. Also, if you want to play games in Chaos Return format or any other format that I feature on the channel, head on over to the YGO from Zero Discord server linked in the description down below. We also hold monthly tournaments and weekly locals events as well. If you want to support me directly, I also have a Patreon linked in the description down below. If you join the Patreon and get shout out in these videos, so big shouts to GMY Vets, Rincewin, Porktrap Coon, Brendan Donker, Tyler Compton, and Dump Truck. It means a lot that you all support me this way and encourage me to make more videos like this in the future. I hope that you enjoyed as always, and until next time, I've been Ben from YGO from Zero, and I'm signing off.